If you tell God where he needs to take you, don't be surprised if you get there and there's no provision. Because he didn't tell you, you told him. How many of you know that? How many of you have lived that out? I confess I have done that. But when God guides, he provides every single time. And that's what is going to happen in our church life, in Lily House's life and everything else. God doesn't lead us to leave us stranded. He leads us into victory. So today I want to talk about God guiding, but also providing. And we believe that he's right. He's doing it as we speak. And this has been a phenomenal week, which I'll share with you in just a moment. Romans 8.31 says this. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, say with me, who can be against us? Now we quote that verse and yet kids church, I'm sorry. To, <laughs> Pastor Sam's over here. She's waiting for any kids to go to kids. I'm so sorry, Sam. I completely it wasn't written on my notes. Can I say that? <laughs> Can I blame someone else? Okay. <laughs> If you've got kids who want to go to kids' church, that's kicking off right here, right down here, up here, somewhere. They're back. They're back. So God bless you. Okay, yeah, give it up for Sam. And if, and if you've got a few kids, take, come out here and, and join the fun. They'll, they'll have a lot of fun today, and we'll be able to breathe a little more. So if God is for us, who can be against us? We need to understand that God is for us. And so many times as Christians, we act like God isn't really for us, like he's going to test us or he's going to mess up our life or he's trying to deprive us of something. But I've got to tell you right now, God loves you and God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. He really does. When Moses needed deliverance, God parted the Red Sea. When Joshua needed a victory, God stopped the sun. When Elijah was starving, God sent crows to feed him. And I guarantee you, when, when, when you have a need, he'll do the same. When Paul was shipwrecked, God made it so that all hands were saved. He did not get shipwrecked, but in that incredible trial, God brought him through and God provided for him miraculously. So God is for you. He is providing for you all you need. So that's why Paul can say in Philippians 4.19, my God will supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And my life is a testimony to this incredible provision. How many of you can honestly say that when you really needed it, God stepped in and provided for you? Let me see your hand. I've seen this dozens and dozens of times, and I won't bore you with those because in a little while, we're going to share two miraculous moments that happened this week in our church life. So um, God is in the house. Do I hear an amen to that? Amen. The scriptures show us over and over again that, that we have a God who delights in providing for his children. However, that provision is dependent on us being obedient. Matthew 6.33, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things are given to you as well. Don't seek all those things because if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, you get those things. Don't worry. They'll come. Just seek him. And I'm sick of people trying to, they see God as a celestial Santa Claus. Oh God, get me this, get me this. That's not what he's about. Last I saw, he was the Lord and we were the servants. And we need to, if we bow the knee in obedience, I guarantee you, God will not let you down. There's a verse I don't like to quote in Psalms, which says, I was young, but now I'm old. That's why I don't like to quote it, by the way. Um, Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. God does not let us down. And even when things look really grim, God has a plan. This is the exciting thing. So if you have a Bible, open to 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, This is the the, uh, account of Elijah. And uh, uh, this is my pun for the morning. This is going to be proven beyond reasonable drought. Because he was... Well, let's read it. Verse 1. Now, Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe... In Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God, Ahab was the king at the time of Israel. As the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall neither be dew nor rain these years except by my word. So by faith, the prophet Elijah called into being a drought. And the word of the Lord came to him and said, depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the book of Cherith, which is, he, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the brook, and, as, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the book, brook Cherith, that is in the east of the, of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening. I'm on a diet at the moment, and bread and meat sounds really good. Can I just say that? <laughs> 
morning and evening bread and meat. I'm, I'm in. Okay. Um, and after a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. So what's happening in this passage? In this passage, Elijah, by faith, called into being a drought. But Byra, he had no resources. So he, he put his own life in jeopardy. He could have um, you know, starved to death in the drought. But what we see here is that the whole nation's going through drought with the accompanying famine. But the question is, would Elijah survive or had he signed his own death warrant? Well, the answer is yes, of course he would survive because Elijah was moving in the power of God and he was under God's care and provision. You see, Elijah was obedient to God and in the midst of this incredible drought, God provided a way. He was a way maker, if you like. So how did God provide a way in the circumstances? I want to look at four ways, just very briefly, on how God provided for Elijah for all of his needs during this incredible time. And I believe he's going to do it for me. I believe he's going to do it for you. Our visitors, he's going to do it for you. For Lily House, he's going to do it. For Ignite Church, he's going to... God makes a way. He is a way maker, miracle worker, and is a promise keeper. Do I hear an amen to that? Good. So the first thing is this. God provides when we obey. 1 Kings 17 verse 5 says this. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. And in verse 3, God told Elijah to pull up stumps and move to a new place beside this brook that that pretty much didn't exist beforehand. And in verse 5, we read that Elijah did exactly that. God said, go over here. Elijah said, yes, sir, and was obedient. He didn't stay in the old place saying, well, I'm not going anywhere, Lord. You better bless me here. How many of us have been there? I remember before my first trip to Africa, praying and saying, Lord, I'll go anywhere on this earth, but don't send me to Africa. (laughs) But he did. And uh, I saw miracles there. So, you know, we don't know everything. God is the God of all knowledge. And so when he says move, we need to move. And not stay here and say, bless me while I'm here. How can you be obedient to God's word, though, if you never read it? How can God guide you if you never listen and obey? See, if you read his word and meditate on his word, then trust him to provide according to his word. He will come through for you. Elijah found a place of safety where God provided for him because he had followed him there. And I've got to tell you, over these past many months, I said this last week and I stand by it. I know we need to move house. Have a look around. We we are jam-packed in here and we still have folks away at the moment. But I'm telling you, God has been speaking to me from Scripture almost every day about moving. So I am confident and I am firm in my faith that God wants us to move to a new position. And I know some of you all have been driving around Nambour saying, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? (laughs) And... um, It's been really fun to watch because I haven't been able to tell you, but I didn't mean it intentionally. You're going to find out today. So the Lord's been guiding me from Scripture, and I believe he can do the same for you. So is is there some area in which God is challenging, challenging you to implicitly obey him? What is he challenging you to do right now? Because if you obey him, it could just be the gateway to his incredible provision. The second thing is God provides what we need. Elijah had only two real needs at this time, food and water, and that is exactly what he got. God didn't send him money. He didn't send him clothes or helpers. He just sent food, which was meat and bread, and water. The food was sent through ravens, and the water came from an unknown brook that that sort of a dried up one that maybe appeared for a short time, then dried up again. This was a miraculous provision of the Lord. But sometimes, you know, God gives us what we need, but we sort of have wants and he doesn't always give us what we want, although sometimes he does. Isn't that true? And and I think, you know, I love the, there's a saying that says, for God so loved the world, he didn't send a committee. What Elijah did not need was a committee. (laughs) What he needed was food and water. And God sent and met that need there. So God knows exactly what we need and he is more than able to provide for us. So when the people of Israel were in the desert, he provided manna from heaven. He provided water from a rock. He's a way maker, right? Most of you know this story. I'm going to tell it to you anyway, because it builds my faith. When I first took over the church here, we faced an impossible situation. We had around 50 or so people. We had to get a quarter of a million dollars in nine months, or or that was to buy this building. 
or the, the, the previous owners of this building said, we're going to just call it all in and bankrupt you. And I said, God, I'm not signing on for a failure. You need to do something miraculous. And from 50 people, none of them rich, the Lord brought in a quarter of a million dollars in nine months. We've seen him do it. Who was here when that happened? Not all of us. We've seen him do it. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And this is why we, we need to realize that we can look back on, we don't live on past triumphs, but we can look back on them and say, you know what? God's done it before he can do it again. The third thing is that God provides at the right time. How many of you know God's timing never matches yours? Is it ever shorter? Not in my experience. It's always longer, always longer. But we should never doubt God's timing. God is never too early. He's never too late. He is always right on time. In 1 Kings 17 verse 6, it says, And the ravens brought him, Elijah, bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. So God not only ordered the ravens to feed Elijah, but he also sent them at the appointed time, morning and evening. They didn't show up at lunchtime. They didn't come in and say, hey, Elijah, early, early afternoon tea. They came at God's appointed time and God had a time to perfection. So when we get anxious, when the answers don't come as soon as we expect, we need to remember that God knows the timing that is best. We've got to stop telling him when we need it and letting him show us and letting him come through in his timing. And he will come through at the right time if we hold on and do not give up. Think about scripture. Think right through scripture, folks. It proves it. Joseph was raised at the right time from being a refugee and a slave and a prisoner to being the second in command for Egypt in Genesis 41. An outcast called Moses waited 40 years. 40 years is a long time. Even for us old timers, it's a long time. 40 years in the desert before leading his people out of slavery. There was a young Hebrew beauty queen who was raised up at the right time to become Queen Esther of the Persian Empire so that God could use her to save her people. And you remember that verse in Esther 4.14, and who knows whether you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. God's appointed time, God's Kairos moment. David was raised up at the right time from being a shepherd boy and a backup musician to the king's band to being the king himself. God provides exactly at the right time. He can do it for us. So we need to follow him and trust him. I have to say that selling this property, selling this property, buying a new one, getting that all organized, organizing uh, council approval, loans, development applications, liaising with agents, is it, it has just about done my head in. And uh, I have a limited brain capacity and it's full with all of this stuff because and and i've i've sort of fiona will tell you i, I come in and i sit there like a zombie because i'm just trying to process i'm not doubting god i just can't fit any more information in this little thing here honestly i cannot cope all i can do is trust god to do the impossible in his perfect timing are you with me yeah. because he can the fourth thing is that god provides in often unexpected ways Woo! Don't you love these moments when God does something and you go, wow. I don't know if you know anything about ravens. They're kind of like crows and they're scavengers. They don't give food away. <laughs> they collect it and keep it for themselves because that's what they do. But these ravens gave, the, gave food away and provided food for Elijah. Isn't that incredible? See, that's unexpected. God does unexpected things. I remember years ago when our kids were young, uh, we wanted to do something special in their life. And so they got dressed for school one day and Fiona and I kidnapped them. And so we just grabbed them, threw them in the car and took them to Brisbane. And we spent the day going around museums and galleries and stuff like that. You know, all these years later, our kids still talk about the day we kidnapped them. <laughs> it was a beautiful moment, completely unexpected. But God has he's put that in their memory banks. They'll never forget what a blessing that was. If you have kids, I recommend kidnapping them just once. I'm not speaking against school. We love school. But I've made a decision never to let school interfere with my children's education. <laughs> so if you, if, you know, you mums and dads, well, think about it just for fun kidnap him take him somewhere special god loves surprising us too you know sometimes he uses the least likely methods to provide for his children so never limit 
or presuppose how God can work in your situation or challenge. When Moses had his back against the Red Sea, God parted the Red Sea. When Joshua needed to defeat the entire the army and he needed victory on that day, God stopped the sun for him. When Gideon was facing the incredible Midianite army, with 300 men, he routed thousands of men. God provided for him. God provided for all those guys, and he will surely provide for us today. Do I hear an amen to that? So some of us, and I speak to myself here, need to stop organizing God and start trusting him. Hello? Am I the only one? I'm a terrible organizer. Who said yes? (laughs) I'm the only one. Thank you so much. I'm a terrible organizer. Just ask any of my PAs. Um, But... When it comes to organizing God, I'll do it gladly. We've got to stop that stuff and start trusting him. We really do. It doesn't mean we do nothing. It means we trust him and we walk with him. So if you want to know God is in something, if you start seeing miracles, you know God is in the house and you're on the right track. Is that true? So I want to share with you, you know, just a moment where we are going. When you see the miracle, God is on the throne. Let me finish with this. Back in Genesis... Abraham had a promise. He left his hometown. He went right from his hometown right through Haran. He came down to the promised land. God made the promise happen. He gave him a son. And when God said, lay down the life of that son, Abraham was obedient. And when God provided an alternative, a substitute, a ram that was caught, when God provided, so that the, the promise could come true, Abraham had to lay his whole, the whole promise down, everything he'd hoped for and dreamed of, he had to lay the whole thing down. And when God provided a substitute, then Abraham said that in Genesis 22 verse 14, Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. God has many names. This is one of them. This is what I want to concentrate on today. Jehovah Jireh means God will provide. My Lord will provide. And uh, some of you who uh, study the Jewish, Jewish text would be familiar with it. But you, if you haven't, you may not be. This is not just a name. It's a promise. And it's a promise for the people of Israel. And it's a promise for the people of God today. God is still a provider today. Yes, he is. He provided for Abraham, Elijah, Moses. And he will provide for us and many others too. So... Let me share with with you the journey. If you weren't here last week, I'm going to recap what I said because today I can tell you where we're going. Yay! We're not buying the RSL. Just putting it out there. (laughs) As good as that would be. I always wanted poker machines in the foyer of a church. Anyway, (laughs) not really. Let me, let me run through this very quickly. I'll buzz through this quickly before. I'm going to give you dollars and cents. And if so if, if you're bored with it, please sing out. Um, but I th- I'm hoping you won't be. So the need. Clearly we are full. Um, this next slide sums it up. Thank you. We are full. We, we need, you know, we're hard pressed for space. This is what it looks like when you come to church at Ignite at the moment. Parking is a disaster. We have discussions groups uh, normally in, in church after church. We need space. And this auditorium cannot cut it. On the flip side, Nambo is the hub of our community. It is at its lowest point in its life cycle. If you've been reading, I don't read newspapers, but someone, um, I, I had a coffee with Peter, he gave me a newspaper. That's fascinating reading, Peter, about where Nambo is going. I don't know if you saw this in this week's uh, paper, Sunshine Valley Gazette. Trams and live music are the key to reactivating Nambour CBD. So we are right. Nambour's at the lowest point in its life cycle with vacant shops and everywhere, but it ain't going to stay that way much longer. They're already, the council's about to pour half a million dollars and more into re-establishing Nambour as an entertainment precinct. And I think my sermons are pretty entertaining, so we'll probably fit right in. (laughs) I'm only kidding. Josh's sermons are entertaining. See, we've got Nambour CBD. It's unique because there are no houses in the middle of Nambour CBD, so they can turn it into a hub. This is what's coming, folks. Um, But around Nambour, uh, right out, if you you think right up to Yandina, right down to, um, you know, out the the back here to Kirilpa and and right down to... um, you know, Palmwoods, Wombai, even beyond up to Budrum, there's a lot of people have access to this area. 
What has happened in this time is since COVID, how many of you have noticed that house prices are a little elevated at the moment? That's because all these Southerners are moving up because they want to come to, you know, God's only a local call from here. So, you know, it's really, it's really handy. Uh, and they want to come up <laughs> to the Sunshine Coast, right? But what it's done is it's driven up prices. But also what it's done, we're seeing an incredible phenomenon in and around this area. This is the cheapest, Nambles the cheap and surrounds is the cheapest housing on the Sunshine Coast. And what we're seeing is all of the renters are being forced out and homeowners are moving in. And it's going to become their town, their home. And that's one of the key signs of a town turning around. So the town is about to change. What I believe and what that article is saying is that Nambra is become an, going to become an entertainment precinct with, with, with restaurants and coffee, uh, coffee shops and bars and all that sort of stuff. The same way Paddington or West End did in Brisbane not so long ago. The bottom line of this is, folks, commercial property in Nambour will never be this cheap again. If we are to move into downtown Nambour, we have a brief window in time. <clears throat> I believe this is what God's saying, and we'll, we'll show you a little bit about that as we go along. So just to recap, no property is perfect, but this is what I wanted. I gave God a wish list. I'm sure you'll agree with most of this. I want a ground floor, ample parking, tick, yes. Did you park this morning? Would you like to park in a nicer place? Good, tick. Council approval, that's the tough one. Walk to public transport, tenants to pay mortgage. I'm a businessman. I like it when other people pay for me. Um, 200 to 250 square meters, easily seen, found, and uh, got to. So I believe we've found this property. I believe this, the property fulfills all of these points, and I really believe that God is opening a door for us including shielding this property from other buyers. There's an incredible story just even there. But let me share with you, the miracle begins. Here's the thing. For us to move into our destiny in there, <coughs> we need a miracle. And the miracle is we need to sell this property. Council refused to change zoning. We met with council. They said, we are not changing zoning. It is going to remain a community facility, which means we can't sell it as residential land. So when Deb approached me, Deb, our, our Lily House director, approached me a little while ago, uh, at the end of last year, she said, why, why don't we put Lily House in here? And I said, well, we can't because it's not zoned correctly. And on a whim... Just a couple of weeks ago, now, Lily House has been told that their, their facility they're in at the moment is being sold from under them in seven weeks, is it now? Seven weeks? Okay. And, and how would you like to try and find a rental for us out there? It's not much fun, I've got to tell you. So I said, well, this is just a crazy idea. So I went to the guy who's doing our town planning for, for us, a Christian guy, Daniel Willis, a great guy, goes to Suncoast. I said, is there any chance that Lily House, which is a community facility, could buy our property to move in. He said, well, I, I don't think so, but le leave it with me. He did some scouting around. Here's what he found. There is a state law which trumps council, which says if it's a community facility, we can have a live-in facility on this property. <laughs> a state law that trumps council. Now, they still have to give building permits, but they can't stop it on the basis of zoning. Is that good? Yeah. Gets better. At the same time, so I said to Deb, well, apparently it's possible, but here's the deal. Lily House has no money. <laughs> Whoops. Deb, come on up. I'm going to let her take over the story for a bit. We'll get back to the church building in a minute, but I want, to, I want you to listen to this. This is going to be awesome. Over to you, mate. Hello, everyone. Listen, before I start, I just want to read a scripture to you. And this is a scripture that God gave me this morning. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. So... Approximately 10 days ago, we were told that we had to vacate Lily House. 
and uh, we didn't have anywhere to go. And we were in a bit of a, well, I wouldn't say we were in a panic, but a lot of people were in a panic, uh, because the rental market is so low. There is nothing even, lowest like, history. lowest in history, not even a one-bedroom unit that people can rent. And, of course, there was a couple of little houses for, for rent, and uh, I turned up to look at one, and within the first 10 minutes, there was 25 people queued up to have a look at that house. And you can imagine that um, a renter actually wants a family with two working parents. They don't really want Lily House to rent their promise premises. Anyway, uh, the difficulty, other difficulty we had is that we don't have any money. Lily House lives from week to week. And um, we've successfully done that for about 12 years, nearly 12 years, and God's always provided. So we needed a supernatural miracle of God. So I'd just like to tell you today that within a week, God uh, began to unveil a miracle. So uh, what happened was um, a series of phone calls came about and I had a meeting with a wonderful gentleman who's 91 years old. And I had a cup of coffee with him. With him. Actually, he had the coffee and I had water because I was too shaky. I thought, I'm not having coffee. I'll talk too much. Uh, anyway, he was talking with another businessman. And I sit, sat there. And the gentleman who took me to meet him said, when he asks you what you want, be very deliberate. Know what you're looking for um, because he doesn't waste time. So I took some beautiful photos of my girls at Lily House and the mums, and all those pictures that I take are ones that I have permission to show. So um, I took some pictures, and he said to me, he just put his hand down like that and said, what do you want? And I said, you know, that I'm from Lily House and that we have now approximately six weeks to get out of Lily House and we need somewhere to go. And he said, yes, but what do you want? And uh, I said to him, well, I need some money to be able to move forward. And he said, yes, but what do you want? <laughs> and I said, well, and just, bef just before I went out of the, and he, he's a lovely gentleman. He apologized later for asking me so many questions. Um, just before I walked out the door, I wrote a very quick little plan, and it said I need, I need $300,000 deposit, $700,000 to purchase this property, and ultimately I'm probably going to need another $200,000 to renovate it. And um, I showed him the picture of the church, and he said, well, that doesn't look very suitable for mums and their children. And I said to him, it's a double block with two buildings on it. And he said to me, well, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Because he's an astute businessman, and he said to me, after I'd been speaking to him for 10 minutes, telling him about the girls, he said, I've got a heart. He said, I've got a heart for homeless women, um, women that have been um, uh, abused, women that have been... Um, are in domestic violence situations, he said to me, I'm 90% sure I'm going to help you. And um, so he didn't tell me, you know, how much he was going to help me with. And then um, he said to me, uh, well, I would want to look at that premises. So I said, okay, yeah. And the other gentleman that was with us says, yes, you can have a look. And I got in the car and I'm quickly dialing Leanne. Leanne, I need the code to the church. I'm coming right now. Leanne probably thought I was crazy. Um, but I need the code for the church. And so I brought the gentleman, the elderly gentleman here. And uh, he... Uh, Paste 91, he paced the premises, and we had the key, and I showed him inside the chapel and how we could make it into some beautiful bedrooms for the girls and a bathroom. And we stood at the front of the church, and he said to me, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. And he said, I've got some money, and how am I going to get that to you? At this point, I've got no idea how much the gentleman, whether he's talking about $100, $50,000, dollars I don't know what he's going to give me. And um, so the other gentleman who'd arranged the meeting said, well, why don't you go with him? So I took a car ride with the elderly gentleman, and we drove to his home. And he walked in the door, and he said to his beautiful wife, um, and I won't say her name, but he said, darling, would you get the checkbook out? 
and uh, she said to me, how much would you like the check? Or who would you, she, she said, who would you like the check made out to? And I said, could you please make it out to Lily House? And her husband said, would you make that check out for $700,000? And I just want to let you know that this scripture is about a mother eagle and those little chicks are in the nest. And sometimes we think that when we're getting pushed out of something that, you know, it's not going to be fun. But the thing is those chicks have to be pushed out so that they can fly. And if we weren't told that we had to get a lily house, we would never have $700,000 to buy this place. Now, God is shaking this nest, and we need you to get out of here so we can come in. How about that? Who's excited this morning? So God can bring $700,000 so that Lily House can buy our church. This leaves us free to buy the church in there. So let me take you, we continue on our journey. I had a look at this particular property and I asked the question, well, what constitutes good value in, in Nambour? I, I don't know, if, you, if you're a business guy like me, you want to do your due, di, due diligence. So I've got Jewish things on the brain, due diligence, okay. Um, so we want to do our homework and make sure that, that it is the right thing that we want. So I did a bit of a survey within Nambour at the moment, properties that are for sale within this area of Nambour, the CBD area of Nambour. Um, I found eight properties. If you can put that up, Eli, thanks. These are the properties here. Um, the old Clark Centre, they now want $1.95 million. Um, you got all of those properties there for a million. The smallest one was 113 Curry Street, which is around about the size of two two shop fronts with a little bit on top. That's 480,000. So I'm looking at this going, man, this is expensive. When I did my sums, and it includes Ray Grace down the bottom here and the old Mormon building at the back and all this sort of stuff. When I did my sums, I compared these eight properties together price between 1.3 million and 3.25 million and the mean average price is just under 2.2 million. So I realized that if the dream was to come true, if we were to get into Nambour, we would be, you know, fair value, if you like, for the sort of property we would need would be 2.2 million. Some of you are gasping and uh, I want to show you now what I've found. Have a look at this. God has provided for us a property. They aren't good photos. It's all we've got. But let me tell you about this property. Property we found has seven ground floor shop fronts, of which we would occupy two, which means five tenants to pay our mortgage. It has nine upstairs offices, all air conditioned. We love air conditioning, don't we? Yes, we're Queenslanders, we love it. It comprises an entire city block in downtown Nambour, nearly opposite McDonald's. It runs from Curry Street, uh, which is here, right through to Short Street at the back. Do you know where Short Street is? Okay, if you don't, go and look it up. The centre of town. It's right um, almost directly opposite the CWA Hall in there where you go for voting. Uh, so it's, it's dead set in the centre of town. The downside of this property is it's in the dodgy end of town. Yeah? So there's no upper crust stuff for us, folks. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Also, there's some renovating to be done and there's some expense in, involved in a car park. But the upside is this. Listen to this. Flat level ground and a great size for an auditorium. It's about 260, 280 square metres. Imagine double the size of this. <coughs> Ample parking, especially on a Sunday, right outside the front. Council has very graciously given us a ton of parking right out the front here on Short Street. Uh, council, listen to this. Council has already signalled that they will not oppose a church in this position. They've also signalled we will need to do the car park. But they said they will not oppose a church in this position. There's no noise restrictions because it's in an entertainment precinct. Um, it's just, yeah, it's phenomenal. Uh, it has five long-term tenants, all of whom want to stay, all of whom have just signed leases this week. 
the auditorium is already air conditioned. The upstairs offices are already air conditioned. It's close to Woolies, train, bus and McDonald's and the markets. When they hold the markets, they hold them here, right here. It's on two titles. So in the future, we could subdivide off the Curry Street side and keep the other side. We can also expand. If we get bigger and bolder, we can uh, take over shops and that sort of stuff as we go through. And it's within our budget. Now, remember I said the mean pr asking price of what we think we would need would be 2.2 million. So based on being conservative and based on every other place in town that's for sale, I estimated that this would be worth 1.6 million. Here's the deal. It was on for 1.2 million. An entire city block for 1.2 million, which was awesome, which was amazing. So we went in, as you do, and thank you to my board who we thrashed out a price. We went in at 1 million and 50,000, 150,000 dollars short of the price. They verbally agreed, and then they came to us and talked to some solicitors, and they said, we need $75,000 more than what we kind of agreed to. And so Fiona, who is a master negotiator, trust me, I live with her, I know it so well. Um, she said, it's time to stand our ground. So we did, and yesterday at 4 p.m., they signed at the original asking price of 1.05. <laughs> so that's the second big miracle. And folks, we're not there yet. It's just, this is just part of our journey and we need more miracles. Um, let me answer the question, why is it so cheap? Why is it so cheap? That's the question. Why, what makes this so cheap? Much cheaper than anything else. And the reason is that it's been in the family for 48 years and the parents have passed away and the kids don't really want to pursue it. So it's not, it doesn't look like this. Thank you, Eli. No, not the next one. I'll come back to that in a minute. Next one. Next one. We're a bit behind. Doesn't look like that. <laughs> I thought you'd be saying, well, why is it so cheap? Yeah. Okay. It is cheap because it's been part of the family. The kids are deciding to sell it now. And what's happened is there, there, there's a lot of heart here. And when we said we would take care of the current tenants, that we would bring life to the center of our town, their heart was moved. And these are good, good folk who have a heart for their community and a heart for what has been in their family for 50 years. Um, there's another thing, though, another miracle. You won't find this property on realestate.com. It never made it to any of the websites. I can't explain why. Fiona was emailed this. It is only on the Keyline website, a small local agent, and we don't know why it's not on the big websites, but I reckon God tucked this away for us and kept every other prying eye from it, and now we have a contract on it, so it is very exciting. I believe that God's got the timing. And God has done an incredible job, don't you? Yeah. Um, so let me just run through this in, in closing. And rather than having groups this morning, we've gone a bit longer in our service, but I want you to be able to ask questions if you want to. Part of Ignite, part of our culture is we do everything out in the open. There's no sneaky stuff going on. And uh, so I, I'm happy for you to ask. But I want to give you some financial considerations. This is for all of you financial people. Uh, are we going to be drowning in debt? Most churches are drowning in debt when they move to a new facility. This is a great price, a whole city block for just over a million. There'll be some renovation required, mainly destructive. The room in which we intend to meet is full of, the, the auditorium in which we intend to meet is full of rooms. So if you can hold a hammer, particularly a sledgehammer, have I got a deal for you. <laughs> it's going to be, we're going to have a smashing time together in there as we clear it out and make way for an auditorium. Um, toilets are still a problem, but public toilets are across the road, so we shouldn't fall down there. I'm still dreaming about a toilet block, but that's another thing. Um, here's the thing. Because we have tenants in there paying our mortgage for us, we need to arrange finance. We have to get, have to get finance to do this. But if we do this, our repayments are going down to less than one third of what we are currently paying here. This will be bigger and cheaper than anything we have right now. 
Isn't that incredible? So those of you who hold the purse strings tight, loosen up a bit because we're going to have more disposable income, not less, if we make this move into this place. And then finally, in years to come, should we feel led, we could sell off the front half, probably pay the whole lot outright and own it outright. How good is that? Is everybody happy? Yes. Is God good? Yes. We need miracles right now. If you're a praying person, I need you to pray. We are not there yet on the Lily House side or on the auditorium side for Ignite. Ignite and Lily, we're not there yet. We need miracles. We need to gain council approval for both buildings. We need a, a building approval here and a full whatever they, code assessment, I don't know, is that English? Planning approval, thank you so much. Planning approval in there. Council takes their time to do these things. We ain't got no times. Our girls will be on the street if we take time. So we need a miracle, folks. We need this to go through in record time. In addition, uh, we need to uh, pray in some money. Not only to do the auditorium up in there, we have to find 50,000 or so, I'm guessing 50, but anyway, a lot of money for a car park. Because now it's changing hands. The council comes in and says, you've got to have a sealed and drained engineer approved car park. So we need, we need God's favor here. We really do. And also we need materials and we need builders to come and work for us. And we need to transform, we're thinking the chapel at the moment, into the new Lily House. And we have six weeks to do it. So put your Nikes on, guys. It's going and, to, and I'm telling you in the natural, in the natural, they will tell you this is impossible. But when I read Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We are on the, on the cusp. We are on a wave of God's blessing here. He's performed incredible miracles. $700,000, bringing the price down to what we wanted. He's given us favor with counsel for the first time in my living memory anyway. And yet, how can we not believe he's going to do it? He's going to do it, isn't he? Yes. So I'm hoping you're excited about that. Um, if you're not... Check your pulse. <laughs> because you're probably dead. <laughs> I'm excited about that. I want to thank particularly the prayers. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Doug and, and uh, Cindy and the others. People who pray. You guys are so excited you're off. That's brilliant. I know it's okay, Donna. <laughs> and, and so many of you have prayed into this. And isn't it great to see the fruit of what you've been praying for up here on the screen? I tell you, God is in that. This is happening faster than anything I could imagine. So God's timing is not always slow, is it? Sometimes it's fast. But I'm excited about it. Lily House is excited about it. We're, we still have to draw up the contract with Lily House. There's still things that need to happen. But, and we need your prayer. And we need favor with council. We need favor with builders. We need materials. But my God is well able. You know? With man, this is impossible. But with God, say it with me, all things are possible. Amen. Just before we wrap it up, I want to sing Waymaker again because I think he is. And as the band comes up on stage, um, so we're finishing a little differently today. Have you got any questions? Is there anyone with a question that would like to fire at me? Yeah. Ross. Yeah, can we go back to the vertical view of the... Yep. Oh, sorry, this is the front of it. This is Short Street, so if you see the pawnbroker, there's an um, uh, orthopedic shoe guy in here. There's a tattooist here. That's interesting, isn't it? He will be our tenant. I was tempted to say we could get a bulk discount on an I Love Jesus tattoo each, but we're not going to go there. Forget, scrub that, scrub that. And it's this blue area down here just before Jet's Gym. Go and check it out afterwards if you like. Uh, can we have can we have the the vertical view the next no forward 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 next one next one again okay right at the front we have the sewing mill and there's an accountant there McDonald's is here on Curry Street 
If you, don't tell me you can't find McDonald's. Okay, have it your way. Um, it's next to the Beach House Hotel. Who's eaten at the Beach House Hotel? Who thinks they're going to eat there a lot? <laughs> yeah, okay. So right next to the Beach House Hotel, this is the Beach House Hotel right through here. There is a laneway here. So this is the sewing shop and the accountant. On top of that is nine offices and a big central area, all air conditioned. Then on the front here, along Short Street, we would have that auditorium there. If you don't believe me, go and look through the window. Yes, Keith. Uh, Absolutely no idea. It's a pile of rooms at the moment. But <clears throat> I'm guessing. Uh, I'm guessing it will will be at least double what we have here, um, and it could probably stretch out to more. See, down there you're on ground floor, so you could literally spill out the door, and you know, I don't know. Uh, there is 16 car parks in here, which is what we've got to seal. There's car parks all the way around the corner like this, and on Sunday they're all vacant, other than the gym people, which is totally not me. Um, there's car parking everywhere there, everywhere. Car parking ceases to be a problem for us. When does the hammering commence? As soon as we can. Um, <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah, the hammering will commence as soon as we can actually own the property. Or, or make a deal to go in early and smash up their place. You know, I don't know. But I'm, I'm sure we can work that out. Um, the thing is, we we need some local builders in tow. We need, um, I know Hendrick and others are, are interested. Deb knows if you guys are interested. I, I just believe God's going to bring people in. So if if you can pray, we need you to pray. If you can hold a hammer without killing someone um, we probably need that as well uh, there'll be opportunities to to be a part of it to to help out um, there's opportunities to give you know they, they, I want you to be you know a part of this and I would love to look in the future and say you know what I gave towards that and so we're going to give you the opportunity over the coming weeks to be a part of what God is doing these are exciting times and um, we are just so blessed any last questions Not that, not thus far. Building and pest is to come as part of the conditions. I do believe it is a big shell, so I think we can knock out pretty much everything. But trust me, greater minds than me will be figuring out what to knock out. You know, I'm pretty sure this could go. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's right, Samson. We need Samson in there. Any other ideas? Any other questions? I'm sorry. No, we're good. So I hope you're excited. This has been a huge morning. We've been sitting on this for a few days and it's been, and, and most of us have kept quiet, but it's been really hard. <laughs> but isn't it exciting to see what God is doing? When God starts moving, we don't have to sit around and wonder if we're in the right place and we're in the will of God. We just know. And I've just shared two or three massive miracles. Am I worried about counsel? No, because God is God. God. 